Hey everybody, it's Casey here at Sea Run Fly and Tackle, and today I'm going to give you a rundown on how to understand the freshwater fishing regulations. So currently we're coming in to the 2024-2025 angling season. Um, I'm filming this, you know, kind of mid-March, not entirely sure when it's going to come out to you, whether it's before April 1st or not, but we get a lot of questions on different freshwater fishing regulations, and I want to show you guys how we get our information on the freshwater fishing rigs. So the province does provide hard copies of, of the fishing regulations, and we run out, other places run out, there's not um, unlimited numbers of copies of them, and there are in-season changes that happen as well that you won't see in that printed copy, so whether there's a natural disaster or chemical spill, um, a variety of different reasons why something can change mid-season, this is where you would find this info, and it is up to you as an angler to understand the rules when you go out and hit the water. Um, so to get into the freshwater fishing regulations, I just open up Google, and I type in BC freshwater fishing regulations. As you can see, we've searched it up many times, so it just comes up. I'm going to click on that, hit enter, and we're going to go to the first link that pops up. Freshwater fishing regulations in BC, obviously, because we are fishing in freshwater in British Columbia. Now, what you won't find in these regulations is our river salmon rigs. Um, salmon is covered under the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, uh, which is federal. And uh, our freshwater uh, trout, uh, steelhead, char, blah, 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 is covered by the province. So if you're looking for salmon fishing regulations in freshwater, we do have a video uh, where Andrew breaks that down for you. But I'm just going to cover the basic freshwater fishing regs for today. So we open up that page, freshwater fishing regulations in BC. You can see it was last updated February 4th, 2024. And to get into the regs, all I'm going to do is click on the picture of these two dudes having a good time, which would be, you would see on the front cover of the, of the hard copy. Now, we hear all the time that these things are impossible to decipher, impossible to read, impossible to understand. Um, in my experience, if you take the time, take 10 minutes and read through these things, they're very well laid out, very, very thoughtfully done. Everything that you need as far as information goes is in uh, this regulation synopsis. So as an angler, it's your responsibility to understand these regulations. Ignorance isn't an excuse as far as enforcement goes. Um, oh, I didn't know that wasn't a rule. Well, that just doesn't fly. Um, like I said, it's it's not the enforcement bodies, you know, whether it's a conservation officer or, or a Department of Fisheries and Oceans officer, um, to educate. It's their job is primarily enforcement. Now, if you give them the time of day, generally, or I shouldn't say generally, every experience that I've had, they're always willing to talk, um, talk about fishing, you know, talk about different rules, different situations that you see, different problems. They're keen for the information too. Um, they are, are great people. Like I said, they're just very, very busy and there's not a lot of them. They're not out there trying to ruin your day by any means. They just want to see people following the rules, doing things right. And, uh, and they really want to get the people that are doing it wrong. Um, so like I said, this, it's up to you to know the rules and, uh, I'm trying to do my best to help provide that information for you. Now I'm a human being. I make mistakes. Same thing, you know, like if you call the shop and say, hey, can you tell me the rules on this? Like our our word isn't the law. The law is what's in, in these fishing regulations. So here's where you can find all the information that you need. If you go at this with a closed mind and just, oh, this is impossible to understand, you're not going to get anything from these regulations. Because like I go at it with an open mind, take 10 minutes. These are very, very well laid out. Um, so start from the first page. How to use a freshwater fishing regulation synopsis. So you can see our province is broken down into sections. Um, just big province, a lot of area to cover. And just for the purpose of this video, because we're in the lower mainland, I'm going to focus on the on the lower mainland. Start at the beginning, read through. You're going to get into your regulations for 2023, 2025. So when a new hard copy of the regs comes out, they will list any 
uh, major regulation changes that will have happened from the, the previous uh, copy that came out. But if you rely on that hard copy, you won't see any possible in-season changes. We get into our table of contents and then how to read the regional specific tables. So this is a really big one. So take the time, read this. It's gonna give you some definitions on different things like single hook, barbless hook, um, you know, what's allowable, what's considered a power boat, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of really good information there. You know, what a bait ban is. So this is a really, really big one. The use of natural bait, see definition of bait on page eight. So if you go to page eight, you will see what the definition of bait is. Um, license fees, you know, who needs a license, all that sort of stuff is covered. So whether you're just a regular resident of BC, you're visiting from out of province or visiting from out of country, all the rates are listed here. What you need to buy a license. So if you're coming down to the shop, you know, you're going to need a piece of ID, uh, all that sort of stuff. Then you get your provincial regulations. So allowable fishing methods, it's methods that are unlawful. Um, like fishing with a dip net or gill net or cast nets, um, you know, what snagging a fish is. Um, we get people will asking all the time, because there's a lot of cool videos out there of like bow fishing for carp. Now, for example, in region two, we cannot bow fish, um, not allowable. Um, other regions of the province, we can do it. Why we can't in region two? I don't know. That's just what the rule is. It's going to talk about quotas, whether you have a daily quota, monthly quota, annual quota how to how to measure a fish um you know what makes a fish a hatchery fish all that kind of stuff is listed out through here so once we get through our provincial regulations we're going to get into regional regulations regulations based off of the different areas in the province that we can fish so we're just going to skip through region one and get into region two the lower mainland so different contact information is listed for you know fish and wildlife regional offices uh, the CO services, and if you need to contact Department of Fisheries and Oceans, uh, different offices throughout the province there as well too, and the RAP line, report a poacher. As we get into the region, we're going to get general regulations for the region. So these are the basic rules that, that will apply to region two at the beginning of region two. For region one, they can be a little bit different. For region three, they can be a little bit different throughout all the, throughout the province. So Fishing in Region 2, we're going to see our general regulations at the top left here. And we're going to read through that. Then we're going to go into our Region 2 daily quotas. So what we're allowed to keep in the region per day. What we have to release, for example, can't keep any wild trout or char from streams. This is a really big one. It's very, it's uh, quite common to get a picture that somebody will come in with and be like, Hey, can you tell me what this is? And the number of times that it's either a dead wild cutthroat or a northern pike minnow. Um, that's usually what it comes down to. And as a cutthroat fisherman, uh, that one kind of hurts. Um, so we cannot kill any wild trout or any char. Now, if you're unsure of what something is and whether you can keep it or not, your best bet is to let it go. Let it go in a respectful manner and you won't have any issues. You never get a ticket for letting something go properly. Now, if you're kicking stuff in, you know, you know, throwing them as far as you can whatever different story you know you got to treat these fish with a little bit of respect a little bit of decency won't have any problems but if you got that dead wild cutthroat on the bank ticket another popular uh, question that we get tidal boundaries so for example or i shouldn't say for example but in a lot of instances tidal boundaries are marked by a railroad bridge why that is i'm not 100 percent sure but it's just a convenient spot so uh, perfect example, if we go to the Stave River, there is the CPR Railroad Bridge that is just downstream of the uh, Highway 7 Bridge when you're crossing over the Stave River. So if you were below or downstream of that CPR Bridge on the Stave, you would require your tidal water license. If you're upstream of that, your freshwater fishing regulation, or your freshwater fishing license is what is required. So check all this out. You know, your possession quota, annual quota, again, everything is all listed there. Now, we get into the water-specific regulations for Region 2. So, I'm going to use Como Lake as an example. Como Lake's just up the street from us, popular urban fishery. A lot of people fish it. So, if we go to Como Lake, which I have listed right here, you'll see, oh, there's something a little bit different there. Trout and char daily quota of two. So, at the beginning 
of the region, we have a general regulation of four trout per day. But because Como Lake is listed in the water body specific regs, this will supersede what it says at the beginning of the region. So we can only have two trout per day out of Como Lake. And that's just because they only put, you know, a thousand or so fish in at a time. If everybody's out there killing four a day, then they're not going to be there for very long. Another spot that I like to kind of show people when I'm going through the regs, Burnaby Lake, no powered boats. So no electric, no gas. Now, Burnaby Lake's tributaries, no fishing. So what's a tributary? The definition of a tributary will be listed in those other pages um, in the regulations, you can find that in there, but basically anything that flows into Burnaby Lake would be a tributary. So Still Creek is an example, or Salamander Creek is an example. Um, not allowed to fish those. So if you're looking at a map and you see a cool little creek or, you know, you've driven over a cool little creek and think, hey, you know, that'd be an interesting spot to fish. If you check it out on a map and it's running into Burnaby Lake, that would be considered a tributary and you're not allowed, not allowed to fish that uh, particular piece of water. Once we get through our regional regulations oh where are we going here sorry got run away with the mouse there some of the other information that you'll find in here species identification charts so this is a real big one um, again like i was saying you'll never get a ticket for letting something go i mean unless you're fishing a body of water that's totally close um like i said if you do it in a in a meaningful way like i said if you just kind of throwing them in the water or whatever treating them without respect different story but uh you know, what makes a kokanee a kokanee, how to decipher a kokanee from a steelhead or an arctic grayling or whatever. In recent years, they've added uh, salmon in here as well, too. When they're all shiny and silver, it can be difficult to decipher between the different species. And they'll give you some cool tricks on uh, on how to tell the difference between, you know, a chinook and a coho or a pink salmon and a coho. Uh, once they get spawning colors, it's a little bit easier. But uh, when they get all colored up, it's generally when you don't really want to keep them quality of the meat is much much different once we get past that we'll get through the other regions in the regulations so we get into some information and resources so just talking about some different aquatic invasive species that have been found in the province um, how we can avoid transporting those invasive species like clean drain and dry your boat so um, also you know, cleaning our, our waders and our boots from going from system to system will, will help prevent uh, spread invasive species. Proper fish handling, catching and releasing fish, uh, harvesting fish for safe consumption, safety and etiquette, all good stuff just to read up on. Again, we just want to want to be decent people out there when we're fishing. Everybody is out there for the same purpose, just to have a good time. And it's, you know, one person can wreck a day for a lot of people out there. Different information about fish tagging, all kinds of cool stuff in there that you can read up on. Uh, there's even rewards for tagging programs. Enforcement and compliance, so an inspection. So if you're asked by a conservation officer, fisheries officer, RCMP constable, park ranger, park warden in a national park, everything's listed here. Um, but so basically, you must provide what they're asking for. So basically, your freshwater fishing license you're going to need a valid piece of photo identification and any gear um, that you have with you if they request to check it. I mean, I've been checked many times where they, all that they've wanted to see is my license. I've been checked where they just want to see my gear. Haven't really cared so much about the license just because I know who they are. We've, we've spoke before. Or sometimes they want to see both. Different penalties for breaking the fishing laws. How you can help the Conservation Officer Service if you see a violation, if you can provide suspect information, vehicle information, the type of violation, the location, the date and the time, especially if you can provide them a photo or uh, a little bit of a video clip. Um, like I said, it's, it's amazing what they can get done. Here's your big one, your definitions of, you know, what an adipose fin, um, what angling is, what an artificial fly is, uh, barbless hook. Again, this is all found at the, at the end of the regs here. And uh, it's up to us to understand these here's a big one snagging foul hooking hooking a fish in any other part of its body other than the mouth attempting to snag a fish in any species is provided and any fish willfully or accidentally snagged must be released immediately 
fishing with a spear or an arrow that is propelled by a spring, an elastic band, or compressed air, or bow, or by hand. You know, what a steelhead is. Kind of all that stuff is sort of listed here. You get a small ruler on that side of that page as well, too, if you've got the hard copy there. Where our fishing regulation, or where our fishing license revenue goes is in the book here as well, too. I mean, it goes back to the resource. It's not going in to get your, your minister a haircut or anything like that. It goes back to catching or providing fish uh, for us as anglers to catch. I hope this helps you guys understand uh, the rigs a little bit better, how to go through it. Like I said, go into it with an open mind, take 10 minutes, cruise through, and I think that you'll find that these things are, are quite well laid out and uh, and fairly easy to understand. And again, if you ever have any questions on regs or, or rules, by all means, give us a call at the shop uh, and, or come on down if you, if you need a little run through. Like I said, we've got all the time in the world to make sure people are out there doing it right. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you find it useful. Smash that like button for me. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And uh, you always feel free to check us out online, www.c-run.com. Thanks for watching, everybody.